everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me here today. Uh, today's video is going to be a little different. This is going to be a scrapbook with me where I basically just walk you through how I made these few pages of my scrapbook. So we ended up going to Newport, Rhode Island just for the weekend and we had a great time. And I wanted to first work on a scrapbook page for the boat tour that we took in the harbor. It was lots of fun. Um, we had beautiful weather and they even give you a free Dell's frozen lemonade while you're on the, the boat tour and uh, that really made it even extra fun. So if you're in Newport and you wanna go on like a harbor tour, I'd highly suggest Gansa Tours, it was a lot of fun. Here you'll see me kind of cutting out one of the backgrounds on the photo that I wanted to use and I'm really happy I did because I'm really pleased with the end result. This is one of the signs that was like right next to the boat that said the exact time of the tour that we took so I really wanted to include that and now I'm basically just arranging the photos on the page trying to get the right combination of like horizontal and vertical that can take a little while and I generally just have to trust the process I also decided to add a little pop of yellow just to tie in and complement the Dell's lemonade cup I also decided I wanted to stamp out Newport for the header on that yellow triangle piece using my typewriter style letter stamps. I got these years ago from Michaels, but I'm sure they still sell something similar. If I can find something similar for you, I will definitely link it in the description box. These come in so handy for all sorts of crafts, so I'd highly suggest getting a set. Once I have the title stamped, it's basically back to just moving the photos and pieces around the page until I start to like what I'm looking at. I also started cutting the photos down to the actual size I needed, and I find generally that once I get to that step of getting rid of the unnecessary background in the photos, then the design really starts to come together. biggest tips for scrapbooking is just to save brochures and anything free like that that you get when you visit places on vacation or if there's like inexpensive stickers or postcards or in my case a keychain that you want to get <laughs> um, just get it it's a good souvenir and you can use it in your scrapbooking right before I start gluing or taping anything down I add in the final components like stickers and I, I get an idea of like what washi tapes I might want to use to complement the colors of the theme or the design. Now comes my least favorite part which is taking everything off of the paper and then gluing things down starting with the bottom layer. My best advice is just to always take a picture of how you had things placed or you will forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many times I've convinced myself I didn't need to do that and then I couldn't remember exactly how I had the page set up. I'm just using Elmer's craft um, glue sticks in order to glue down my pictures. Um, typically I use tape, like specific scrapbook tape, but I ran out. So I'm kind of just making do with my, my Elmer's glue sticks right now. <laughs> um, but in general I do prefer the tape. I'm adhering each of these photos I'm using this like extra piece of cardboard paper that I had laying around but you can use anything just to cover it and kind of press down the edges I'm using these 
craft paper stickers that I got at Hobby Lobby just to write down a little caption that just describes what we did and so when I look back 10 years from now I'll know what this page is about. that final piece and then I'm just going to start placing those last minute details the stickers the washi tape that I thought would look nice with this particular page and as you'll see at the end I did make a couple minor edits after I had finished this page um, mainly I put something right at the very top because I just felt like it was empty up there but we're now moving on to our second page <music> This map of the Newport Cliff Walk that I knew I wanted to include. As you can see, I kind of went back and forth about making some sort of like fold out with it, but I ended up just cutting off that last piece and placing this as like the background on which to put all of the photos. Just like with the last page and as you'll see with every spread that I do here, basically I just start moving the pictures around until I find something I like. This process can take a little bit of time and generally it's never really done. Like even when I finish a page I usually end up with something where I decide I could have done something a little different. But basically once I start kind of trimming the pictures I know the general position of where I'm going to put them. Now just rounding out the corners of each of my photos. I just liked the smoother edges. I thought it kind of went more with the water theme. So I ended up, like I said, cutting off all those corners. I have that nifty little tool that has been in my family for years, so I wish I could tell you where it's from. I don't know, but if I can find something similar, I will link it. And then I was just kind of adding in a few more kind of finishing details. So I wanted to include that yellow that I included on the previous page. I thought it'd be a nice pop of color. And I just ended up putting that under the craft paper that I'm going to use for the, the caption for the page just to give it a little bit of extra color. Placing on some of those finishing details, just getting an idea of where I want to put them. And then comes my least favorite part, which is, of course, taking everything off the page and gluing. <laughs> um, I went back and forth about adding another little caption to this page, but I ended up just keeping it simple with the one. And just like the previous page, I wrote a little bit about what we did that day and what we thought of the cliff walk. If you're in Newport, the cliff walk is beautiful and it's also free, so you can just go and walk for as long as you want. We visited kind of the north end, but it's huge. I think it's like three, three and a half miles long in total. So it's definitely worth visiting if you're in Newport. before just do yourself a favor and take a picture of the spread before you take everything off. Um, it really helps when it comes to making sure that you put the layers back exactly where you had them so you don't put something under something that was previously on top of it um, or any other 
you know, complications that can come from going off of your memory. For me, when I was filming this, I was filming it on my phone, so I didn't really have anything to take a picture with except my iPad, which is just incredibly awkward. So use anything that you have at your disposal just to have a little bit of an idea of what you had placed down before. Because when it comes to layers, it's incredibly difficult unless you have a photographic memory to remember where you put everything. love how this page turned out and I'm so happy with the placement of all the photos but my favorite part of anything is always the finishing touches so the washi tape the stickers things like that that's just my favorite part I feel like it really never feels final until I do that I ended up going with this butterfly washi tape and I picked butterflies. I know it might seem a little bit weird with the like ocean theme, but while we were on the cliff walk, we saw so many gorgeous butterflies that I felt like it was just a good memory. it for this second page we are soon going to be moving on to the third spread that I did which was for this big mansion that we saw in Newport called the breakers it's one of the Newport mansions that you can tour and once again I'm just laying out all the pictures that I have to go off of for this particular page and I had done a little bit of this off camera. I made that little, um, the breakers heading, only because it takes me so long to get the stickers even that it just would have been unnecessary to show you how I did that. <laughs> but basically, I it, it takes a while, but it's just, it's just tedious, so I didn't feel like I needed to show it. But once I had things kind of where I thought I might keep them, I started writing the caption for the page. And this one I put a little bit of a longer caption just because there was so much to see at the mansion and the grounds were just beautiful so outside of the mansion it backs right up to the harbor so it's absolutely gorgeous. If you have the opportunity to visit I would suggest going and I wanted to kind of capture that in the caption and as you'll see at the end of this spread I do end up putting a few more notes in other captions. I went back and continued using that rounded edge tool that I was using before. Like I said, this particular thing, I think I stole it from my mom when I moved out. I, it's got to be from like 2002. So I don't think, I don't even think the company that sells it exists anymore. But at this point, I was frustrated because I just decided I didn't like the background color. So I ended up just changing it to this kind of green tone and I think that worked way better with the photos that I had and I was really happy that I ended up changing it. So once I had that background it was a little bit easier for me to try to figure out where to put everything. Generally if I can't figure out why I don't like something it's usually because I don't have the right color scheme whether that's the background or the pictures themselves or you know whatever it may be but once I figure that out things generally start to come together. So this is the general layout I ended up going with and I'm really happy with it. Once I glued everything, then I was able to determine that I wanted to add a few more of those craft paper captions and you'll see me do that in just a bit. I forgot to 
mention at the start of this video that the reason I'm burning this particular candle is because I actually bought it at the Breakers in their gift shop. So they had different scents for like each of the different rooms in the house, which I thought was really cool. So I bought the one for the music room and it smells absolutely delicious. So this particular candle smells like currant, plum, and vanilla. I almost bought the candle modeled, the scent modeled after the library and I'm so sad I didn't because it would be so cute to put like on my bookshelf or something. It was adorable and I'm sad that I didn't buy it. Once I had all the photos glued down and I was kind of adding in those finishing touches, that's when I decided I needed to add a few more captions. So I added some washi tape, but then I also went back and I added a couple more written notes. Last but not least, once I had put on that final written note, I still felt like something was missing. So I ended up adding one Polaroid to the bottom right hand corner. And I just printed this off using my Instax mini printer, which I think is about $100. Um, I got mine at Target and it's absolutely amazing. I use it a lot. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. These are the finished pages kind of closer up so you can see in more detail what we're working with. I'm really happy with how they turned out and I'm definitely interested in doing more of these videos in the future if this is something you liked. I could also do some more book related scrapbooking content, maybe like my book journal. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to let me know in the comments and I will talk to you all very soon.